Welcome back everyone. This is Last Epoch and this is a title that you may or may not have heard of at this point. This is an ARPG similar to Diablo 4 or Diablo Immortal which have been featured on this channel. And I really like this game and wanted to give everybody a chance to check it out themselves. This is in beta at the moment and there's a lot of anticipation for this when it goes live and I can see why. This game is everything that most ARPGs have. You obviously will have equipment, you'll have the ability to customize this equipment through the forge and you can do that with things like these shards, there's glyphs, there's also runes, so there's a big factor and a big emphasis on customizing your equipment for your particular build and the skill trees and passive trees allow for that as well. We'll get there in just a second. I also want to mention there's idols. These are similar to Diablo 2 where you'd have something in your inventory that passively buffs your character and you'll be able to unlock these and fill up the slots. You'll also unlock blessings later on as well as an appearance tab. So there's a lot you can do with your particular character but there's just so much customization that you can do for your particular builds. And I really like that because that really allows for a lot of immersion. And that's a big part in ARPGs, in my opinion. So you start off with a passive tree here. And roughly around level 20, you'll be able to get a mastery. And you can select one of the three for each class. And there's many different classes in the game already. This happens to be the prime list, as you can see here. Once you select a mastery, you can also then put points into the tree here. But you can always dip into other ones as well. For example, in the Shaman here, getting increased damage and increased minion damage will be strong for my particular build because I'm playing the Beastmaster, which is going to use minions or companions for this particular build. So you'll want to dip around and so forth. You'll also unlock special abilities as you go further, whether that's in your basic class tree or one of these mastery options. There's a lot going on there and there's really a good consolidation of numbers. The numbers aren't so escalated or scaled to such the point that one build does five times the damage of another. And this is really nice because you can really have a thought or a vision in your mind and then spec your character out and make something that's viable. In fact, I'm yet to have a build that isn't viable and I'm unable to level or get through the progress in the game. And that's a really great feature because it allows you to play what you enjoy and something that you want to build and you can really make things unique. In the case of the prime list here, you could go for physical melee damage. You could actually go into elemental types of damage. You could be a hybrid as seen here. You could go for spell damage and then you can still go into one of these mastery classes and still kind of add more versatility to that so it's really great and even if you're using all the same skills and the same mastery as somebody else there's a way to further that as well through skill specialization you can put five of your skills up on the bar here and actually use skill points to then elevate these skills as well in the case here you see that i'm getting additional melee damage and spell damage after using my leap ability and this is going to eventually work for my minions as well when i go forward and further in the tree so just some really nice ways to customize a character to to be what you are looking for. And I really like that. Again, I feel the immersion of the character and building what you have envisioned it's just a really good way to get you into a game. And this game does that in tremendous fashion, to be honest. There's, of course, fast travel, as you can see with the waypoint here. And clicking on it will give you access to other areas on the map. And you can go and look at different errors, which is part of this game, but I don't want to spoil too much. But essentially, you can travel to any of these places that you see and have unlocked the waypoint at this point. I've only got several on this one at the moment. However, you get more as time goes on and you continue to level up. You have a stash, which is shared between characters. The gambler, you can forge your items, as mentioned before, to upgrade them. You can sell all the things that you normally do in an ARPG. You've got a mini map in the upper right, or you can use that to display over or on top of your character, which a lot of people like as well for just moving around and doing the quest. There's main quest, side quest. So let's go ahead and look at the combat now as well. I'm gonna go ahead and travel somewhere. Go ahead and get my summon up. And you can have multiple companions. It just depends how you want to spec your character. I've actually specced into buffing just a single companion. So that's why you're only gonna see one at the moment, but I also can drop that totem machine. And you'll see the combat very similar to what you may experience in other games. Essentially with this character, I wanted a little bit of mobility with the leap, and I don't want to go too far in depth about just this particular character. I'll cover it in depth when I hit max level and have a, a full build to display. But I'm going to essentially buff melee damage and my pet's damage and just kind of work my way through the mobs that way. There's just enough AoE to kind of clear everything, and my minion or bear there has good single target damage. As you can see, some of those numbers hit around 700, which isn't ridiculous as opposed to some games where you may hit numbers of 7 million, 70 million, 7 billion. So it's nice to kind of see that consolidated because I really feel that that helps you play any of the builds that you're interested in and not be pigeonholed into one particular build. Now I, this character also is going to specialize with axes so I can just leave that sword on the ground. But there is a nice feature I'll show you is next time something else drops. You can actually see the loot before you pick it up and place it in your inventory so you don't have to shuffle things around. You can know whether or not that's something you want to bring to your inventory. And just by hovering over the item which is blocked behind me but you'll see the stats on the item before you even pick it up and you actually have the ability to compare it to what's equipped and then you can decide if you even want to pick this item up at all so it makes it really easy to kind of filter the loot and just decide what you want and you go back to town less often haven't had any issues with gold at least in the beta so you don't need to pick everything up and frequently visit town to send it sell it excuse me 
But no, your pets can't go back to town and vendor your items for you like they can in other titles like Torchlight. I don't know if that's coming or maybe there's a talent tree for that, but I haven't discovered that yet. I do have a couple of points here on the bottom and those are for the skill specializations. As you use these skills, that's what unlocks additional points up to a maximum number. So if we go in here, this is my melee attack and I'm still kind of buffing this. This is gonna do more damage in a larger area. This is very convenient. So I'm just gonna use this one at the moment and later on I'll spec into something else. So this example here makes that do more damage but has a cooldown. I don't actually want a cooldown on that ability so I'm not gonna go in this direction. From here I'm gonna go in a different route and I'll have to decide when I get my next point. For my bear, same thing. You get a whole bunch of points where you can specialize. My bear can now cast a Briar Thorn, which is a range spell, which does physical damage. This is a nice way to allow my bear to do some damage when it's not on a target. Maybe that's the route I'm going to go. I'll have to look at this a little bit more. I do like this Forceful Swipes. My bear can use Swipe, which is the ability I just showed you, and now also has all the things affected by my Swipe Tree. So this is going to be a nice buff, so I definitely want to pick this up. And I know that's going to be a solid choice, because I've got that skill as a specialization as well so my bear is also going to gain everything in this tree at least when it uses that ability here you can see a better version of the map overhead and just allows you to really kind of quickly navigate through while you're doing quests making your way and then you can always toggle it off just by hitting the tab button and so forth but the combat the gameplay not much different from other titles that you've likely seen they're mostly similar the graphics remind me a little bit of torchlight if you're familiar with that and that's pretty much it. So you'll pick up what you want and, and go through the game just like other ARPG titles. And check this game out. Definitely worth it in my opinion. And I think this is going to be pretty popular when it does come to full release. As always, thanks for taking the time to watch and have a great day.